Hey everyone, this is Neil Barnhill with the Barnhill Golf Institute, helping you find your winning way. I am excited to bring you some great news. We are going to have a weekly series called the BGI Weekly News Show. Where we're going to talk about different topics related to golf each week. And you can email me at barnhillgolf.com. Look it up and you can leave us a comment what you would like to talk about, what you'd like me to talk about, and I'll be glad to uh, consider that option. All right, this week I want to start out the topic on golf equipment. There is a lot of new exciting technology out there and if you have some clubs that are older or didn't get club fit, I'm going to give you some ideas and some options to consider. Uh, it's just knowledge. Knowledge is power. And in this case, it's just investing some time and researching and actually going through some processes that I'm going to suggest to you, for you to do, and uh, it could be uh, worth your time. Okay? Uh, how good is the golf equipment? How good are the drivers? How good is the new irons? How good are the new sand wedges and wedges and driving irons? Well, we're going to go through that. First, I want to talk about, as you can see in my clubs, I just got a new set of clubs back in June. I was a little bit I, I, a little bit skeptical about the whole process and didn't know, hey, my old clubs, which were over 10 years, are they, are they going to be that much better? So I set up a club fitting uh, with a master certified Callaway club fitter who used a track man, and we did it at a driving range. And we went through the whole process of so I hit a seven iron, I hit mine, we saw the numbers of the ball speed, club head speed, spin rate, smash factor, all those considerations, saw the distance it carried and rolled, took the data from that on my seven iron and then actually hit some other seven irons. I hit six or seven different combinations and when I found the right one, the numbers were very consistent. My smash factor was really, really good. It was really consistent. The, the distance it carried was very consistent. So then we went to my driver and that's when it was like, are you kidding me? I could not believe the numbers. Mine was carrying 235, 240, and I got some a new driver. We put the head on there, and the first one was not too good. Went through about four or five, and then I found one, and the numbers, I could see it because we hit an actual driving range, real grass conditions, not inside the bay inside. So I could actually see it, I could feel it, then I looked at the numbers and I was blown away. It was carrying 268, 272, 265 with a nice ball flight. And when we looked at the numbers, what is cool about today's technology, we can use the spin rate when you look at it. You want, you know, my club head speed was right around 105, 106 for the driver. So that's gonna dictate what your spin rate should be. So everybody's is gonna be a little bit different. So mine, we got it down to around 2100. It was at 3000 to 3300 with my old driver. So I had way too much spin. So we got that number down and all of a sudden, my distance increased by 25, 20 yards, some of them 30 yards. So then we tried the driving irons. I tried the driving irons, the driving irons, or utility irons. I got a, a 18 degree and a 21 degree in that. And then we tried some different sand wedges. The Mac Daddies is what Callaway sells. It's got grooves in between the grooves. It's very interesting. They have a great feel to them. Roger Cleveland designs those for Callaway. And I tried it with different bounce. So I believe like my I went a 50 degree and then a 54 degree and a 58. So I got 12 degrees bounce on each one of them. And that fit me perfectly for my type swing and the angle that I come into attack. It's unbelievable how much it spins when I play it. I'm still getting used to that and it's very, it's a very nice thing to, to adjust to, I'll tell you that. So. That's my experience. I thought the equipment was incredible. The only negative was I had to get out my credit card and buy these things. Not cheap, <laughs> but it's a great investment. And if you're gonna make that type of investment on some clubs, you need to get club fit. You need to do it right. 
You need to have a PJ of America person that certified in club fitting do that for you so you understand what process you're going through and understand why you're why you hit a certain club head with all the numbers. And if not, like how I experienced it, there are other ways to go about getting a club fitting, which are you could go to Golf Galaxy, they have PGA professionals there that do a great job with doing club fitting in the bay and you can try different clubs. You can try the Ping, Mizuno, Callaway, Cobra, you name it, a Tidalist, uh, they're all top name brands with different combinations and they will get you fit there. And you, they do have the technology to tell you the numbers like I described before with the ball speed, head speed, spin rate, uh, all those, how far it carried and it, it does that. Also the PGA Superstore, they do a great job. They have some PGA members there that were there and they do club fitting so you have several options utilize this information that I'm telling you and oftentimes they won't charge you for the club fitting. In fact, I don't think they do. They do not charge you for the club fitting because then they're going to turn around and sell you some clubs if, they, if you go through the process and you feel positive about it. But the club fitting is just your time. So, and I don't take my word on it. It may be $15, $20 and some stores are different than others as far as what they charge, but it's minimal. And if you're going to invest thousands of dollars in clubs, you need to have it done right, and you will be glad you did. Uh, one of the things too with irons that a lot of people don't understand is there's a lie angle to it that you need to get checked. As a PGA professional, what we do is uh, we put a board down there, plexiglass, you hit, we see how it measures. Uh, when you go through the process, they can explain that to you, but that is an important thing to consider when you're, when you're getting club fit. You need to have the lie angle checked, okay? Uh, I mean that's a lot of different ideas there, um, a lot of people, I can't believe the amount of people that will buy and spend thousands of dollars and not do this. So, because you can spend a lot of money on a, on a top line club and it not fit you at all. So I'll give you a very simple example, because I used to do a lot of club fitting back 10 years ago. We sold Callaway and we did a lot of club fitting. Uh, it would be like, all right, you could buy a $500 pair of shoes. The top of the line, say they're the best on the market, they're, they're, they are the style. But if it's not your size, guess what? It's not going to be any good. It's not going to fit good. It's not going to feel good. You're not going to walk in them. It's not going to perform at all for you. Same thing with clubs. You can get a name brand club and if the shaft doesn't fit for you, if it doesn't kick right at impact, if the lie angle is wrong, if it's not the right length, the grip size should be correct. You've got all these factors and that's what we as PGA professionals are here to help you with in understanding and give you that education on what you should get. And when you go through the process, you will understand what you need to get. And that's what we're here to do is to help you. So different equipment out there. There's a lot of good stuff um, out there. It's not just Callaway. I like Callaway personally. Uh, Titleist. I got a buddy of mine who plays Titleist and he loves it. So it's a personal uh, way of whatever you like. It's You can try everything. A Golf Galaxy or the PJ Superstore. Cobra's great. You know, ping. You know, try them and see what you like. It's a personal preference. So I challenge you to take this information and go forward with it and give me comments on this on my web page, barnhillgolf.com. I'd love to hear from you. If you have any questions, I would love to hear what you have to ask and I can try to point you in the right direction as best I can. So that is today's episode. I look forward to doing this every Wednesday. Again, we are gonna call this the BGI Weekly News Show and we're gonna have some exciting golf topics to talk about. I'll see you next time.